December 20th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Zephaniah chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. This is the prophetic message that the Lord gave to Zephaniah, son of Cushai, son of Gedaliah, son of Amariah, son of Hezekiah. Zephaniah delivered this message during the reign of King Josiah, son of Ammon of Judah. I will destroy everything from the face of the earth, says the Lord. I will destroy people and animals. I will destroy the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea. The idolatrous images of these creatures will be destroyed along with the evil people. I will remove humanity from the face of the earth, says the Lord. I will attack Judah and all who live in Jerusalem. I will remove from this place every trace of Baal worship, as well as the very memory of the pagan priest. I will remove those who worship the stars in the sky from the rooftops, those who swear allegiance to the Lord while taking oaths in the name of their king, and those who turn their backs on the Lord and do not want the Lord's help or guidance. Be silent before the Lord God, for the Lord's day of judgment is almost here. The Lord has prepared a sacrificial meal. He has ritually purified his guest. On the day of the Lord's sacrificial meal, I will punish the princes and the king's sons and all who wear foreign styles of clothing. On that day, I will punish all who leap over the threshold, who fill the house of their master with wealth taken by violence and deceit. On that day, says the Lord, a loud cry will go up from the fish gate, wailing from the city's newer district, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail you who live in the market district, for all the merchants will disappear, and those who count money will be removed. At that time I will search through Jerusalem with lamps. I will punish the people who are entrenched in their sin, those who think to themselves the Lord neither rewards nor punishes. Their wealth will be stolen and their houses ruined. They will not live in the houses they have built, nor will they drink the wine from the vineyards they have planted. The Lord's great day of judgment is almost here. It is approaching very rapidly. There will be a bitter sound on the Lord's day of judgment. At that time, warriors will cry out in battle. That day will be a day of God's anger, a day of distress and hardship, a day of devastation and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and dark skies, a day of trumpet blast and battle cries. Judgment will fall on the fortified cities and the high corner towers. I will bring distress on the people and they will stumble like blind men, for they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dirt. Their flesh will be scattered like manure. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them. In the day of the Lord's angry judgment, the whole earth will be consumed by his fiery wrath. Indeed, he will bring terrifying destruction on all who live on the earth. Bunch yourselves together like straw, you undesirable nation, before God's decree becomes reality and the day of opportunity disappears like a windblown chaff, before the Lord's raging anger overtakes you, before the day of the Lord's angry judgment overtakes you. Seek the Lord's favor, all you humble people of the land who have obeyed his commands, Strive to do what is right. Strive to be humble. Maybe you will be protected on the day of the Lord's angry judgment. Indeed, Gaza will be deserted and Ashkelon will become a heap of ruins. Invaders will drive away the people of Ashdod by noon and Ekron will be overthrown. Those who live by the sea, the people who came from Crete, are as good as dead. The Lord has decreed your downfall, Canaan, land of the Philistines. I will destroy everyone who lives there. The seacoast will be used as pasture lands by the shepherds and as pens for their flocks. Those who are left from the kingdom of Judah will take possession of it. By the sea they will gaze, and the houses of Ashkelon they will lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God will intervene for them and restore their prosperity. I have heard Moab's taunts and the Ammonites' insults. They taunted my people and verbally harassed those living in Judah. Therefore, as surely as I live, says the Lord who commands armies, the God of Israel, 
Be certain that Moab will become like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah. They will be overrun by weeds filled with salt pits and permanently desolate. Those of my people who are left will plunder their belongings. Those who are left in Judah will take possession of their land. This is how they will be repaid for their arrogance, for they taunted and verbally harassed the people of the Lord who commands armies. The Lord will terrify them, for he will weaken all the gods of the earth. All the distant nations will worship the Lord in their own lands. You Ethiopians will also die by my sword. The Lord will attack the north and destroy Assyria. He will make Nineveh a heap of ruins. It will be as barren as the desert. Flocks and herds will lie down in the middle of it, as well as every kind of wild animal. Owls will sleep in the tops of its support pillars. They will hoot through the windows. Rubble will cover the thresholds. Even the cedar work will be exposed to the elements. This is how the once proud city will end up. The city that was so secure. She thought to herself, I am unique. No one can compare to me. What a heap of ruin she has become. A place where wild animals live. Everyone who passes by her taunts her and shakes his fist. God, I love how clear Zephaniah is. The day of the Lord is coming. Those who aren't righteous will be punished and destroyed and your people will be blessed. You know, it's interesting that Judah actually saw the exile of, of their northern neighbor, their brother Israel, just about a generation or, or two previously to that. Uh, Israel was exiled to Assyria. Uh, Judah knew completely why they had been exiled as punishment by you. And yet we see Judah doing the exact same thing. You send in all these prophets uh, to help Judah realize that they still have a chance to repent, to turn back from their ways. Uh, Josiah even came in and uh, tried to have righteous reform. My words, not your words. Righteous reform. Uh, and even rebuilt the temple, uh, but to no avail. Uh, the people's hardened hearts uh, remained. And of course, we eventually see Babylon uh, overtaking Judah and exiling them. And then we see a small remnant come back from your punishment of Judah. And I think that is one of the key pieces actually throughout the whole Bible is we see this remnant, uh, the sovereignty of your people continuing to thrive uh, throughout all of history. You know, if if quite a few thousand years ago, Zephaniah was talking about the day of the Lord, uh, the, the day of judgment, and he was warning people back then, how much more should we be aware of that if we're quite a few thousand years into the future? Shouldn't we be incredibly aware of what we do and intentional about why we are doing it? But I don't think we are. I, I think we have watched generation after generation after generation of Israel, in quotes, Israel, people being sent to exile. We see people being punished. We see people being destroyed. We see whole nations being destroyed because of their hardened hearts, because they didn't turn to you. And yet here we sit in the 21st century doing the exact same thing, fully having this, this depth and richness of history of understanding how incredibly mighty you are, your sovereignty, your control, and yet we're still disobedient. The attributes that you give Babylon and Judah are very similar to ones that we have ourselves as, as human beings. The I am unique, no one can compare to me. <laughs> uh, Babylon thinking no one could ever topple them, no one could ever overwhelm them. And we see so many nations who thought that way throughout throughout history and and I would suspect that you know if we're looking at the big spectrum of history the United States is one of those people if we could look back on history 
maybe 3,000 years from now and, and we see the United States incredibly proud and arrogant and we see them uh, ultimately being destroyed because of that arrogance. I can see that happening. But sometimes when we think of nations and we apply attributes to nations, we don't quite make it as personal as we should and so there's no application in our life. We need to bring those elements, those human elements that we give to nations down to the heart level. And we really need to take a look at our lives. And God, I'm speaking personally uh, about looking at my life and, and allowing, allowing myself to be open to the changes that you need to have happen in order for me to continue to glorify you and in order for me to walk the path that you have for me. I don't want to think that I am all that. I do not want to, to believe I can go through this world on my own. I do not want to go against your will. I just had an interesting conversation last night where I was trying to explain to somebody that if you're not doing God's will, you're doing Satan's will. There's only two wills. And uh, they were adamant that there's a third will, which is our will. And I'm like, our will? Most of the time, <laughs> Satan's will is not God's will. So God, allow that application to happen. Allow our hearts to be examined every single day. Allow you to humbly show us what we need to work on and then to move forward from there. The day of the Lord can happen today. It can happen next week and it can happen in 50,000 million years from now. We don't know. But we do know that you have called us to be your children. You've called us to be your disciples. And you've honored us and blessed us by allowing us to talk to other people about you. Your amazing love, your grace, your compassion, your forgiveness. And because of that, it doesn't matter whether you're coming back today or in a 50 million trillion years. All that matters is that we are obedient to what you've called us to do. Understanding that when the end of times do happen, the punishment of the unrighteous will occur, the destruction and, and the destroying of those people, and the eternal blessing of the people who have followed you and your will. God, I pray for all of this to happen. In your son's name, amen.